miss. Let's keep moving. It's on your right, here. We're almost there. Does this man look familiar to you? Hmm. I'm not sure. Look closely. Take your time. So, uh, you expect me to believe that's all you were doing there? Hmm? Having a drink? And I suppose you'd be dressed as a woman. Here we are. Good luck. She's all yours, sir. Sophie Roy, I'm Detective Maurice Tremblay. Let's see. 21 years old, working at the Clarington for over a year. Husband? I'm sorry? Are you married? No, not yet. I live with my mother. She's sick, so I have to take care of her. No father? No. It's always just been me and my mom. All right, Miss Roy. I need you to tell me everything that happened, starting with this morning. Oh, par la fontaine, les filles s'en vont et s'y promènent au bras des garçons qui les entraînent au cœur des buissons. Où elles étreignent l'amour en saison Qui les enchaîne dans un tourbillon Le vrai poème, car dans les frissons Naissent toujours les plus belles chansons d'amour Au clair de la fontaine J'ai vu dans tes yeux mille couleurs Quand la claire fontaine s'amusait Document's done. Now just a bit of tidying up and I can go on break. That's a lot of money to owe. Just what did you get yourself involved in? Nothing like a bed's not complete without its pillow. A bed's not complete without its pillow. A bed's not complete without its pillow. No need to bother reception right now. Only menswear. Are you in town for a business trip, maybe?
And voila, good as new. I'm guessing you've seen better days, but you're obviously still important to someone. at home. Look at her. Always glued to that gossip magazine. Do you think she has any real friends? Or is it just Gracie, Joan, and Marilyn? Well, when your own wife is that dull, you need to get your excitement somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see Rebecca come in this morning? She was wearing the same clothes. Now, don't you think it will be awesome? This is exactly the kind of behavior Linda warned me about. <laughs> Sophie speaking. Hey, it's Beth. Do you think you could come up real quick? Um, sure. I'll be right there. You're right, you didn't. No, I realize I didn't know I was so in love with you that I didn't What? what Beth wanted to talk about. I should talk to Beth at the front desk. Let's see what Beth wanted to talk about. I should talk to Beth at the front desk. Hmm, now's not the time to pick up Smokey and Sophie. Tempting, but every penny adds up, Sophie. Leaving luggage in the lobby? Are you trying to get Bernard to kill you? Hey, Beth. Hey there. So, who's sleeping? Sleep what? 
You were whispering just now on the phone, so I thought maybe Eugene or Bobby were napping in the break room again. Oh, yeah, no. It's Jacques and Wendy. They were, um, in the middle of something. Ugh, it's so awkward when they start making out like no one's watching. Get a room. We literally work in a hotel. They weren't kissing this time. They were fighting. Oh, this is entertaining. I mean, oh no, why? I'm not completely sure, but it sounded like Linda had something to do with it. Ugh, that bitch. Beth! Trust me, she deserves it. I don't think Linda should take all the blame. Jacques really isn't being fair to Wendy either. Oh, you're absolutely right. It's terrible for Wendy that her fiancé has the backbone of a snail. <laughs> you shouldn't say that. But it's true! Even the way he walks, I swear. Beth, he could come back any second now. Can we just... Didn't you say you needed my help with something? Oh yeah, right. Wanna guess what? I'm guessing there's something I have to clean? Obviously. But what is it? Uh... Did a kid throw up again? God, no. Did that happen recently? Yeah, last week. I can still smell it. Feel it, too. While I was cleaning, some of it got- uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Keep talking and you'll be cleaning up after me, too. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, no, you'll be glad to know it's nothing gross this time. A nice gentleman decided it was time to redesign the lobby and helped us by knocking over that vase on his way out of the hotel. That's it? I would do it myself, but the last time I tried to leave the front desk, Bernard emerged from his lair to scold me about procedures and whatnot. Well, we can't have the beauty of the Clarington Hotel take absence from her throne, can we? Oh, the people would riot. Bernard especially. <laughs> Bernard's hardly the people. Anyway, I have to get back to work. There's a mop in the supply closet next to Bernard's office, I think. Thanks. I'll see you around. Okay, let's get that mop from the supply closet. Chocolate mousse cake. Maybe Bobby wouldn't mind sneaking me a slice. Ugh, no. Bernard would have both our heads. Linda's been putting these everywhere lately. It's weird that Bernard allows it. Smell. If only we were allowed in there. Linda, Wendy's great at her job. Guests absolutely love her and... <laughs> Not just guests, apparently. Oh, God damn it, Linda! I only like her because guests like her. Making sure guests are happy is my job, after all. You don't seem to care whether I'm happy. <sighs> Listen, 
If Wendy wasn't doing her job, that'd be another story, but I can't just fire her without good reason. What if she stirred up trouble among the staff? Would that be a good reason? Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, Andrew, hi. I, I was, I mean, I'm sorry, I was just... Spying on our manager? No, I, I heard something and I... Hey, hey, hey. It's okay, I'm just pulling your leg. I'm, I'm sorry I scared you. I'm just, I, I'm not used to having people around me while I work. Yeah, you're always working alone up there, aren't you? I actually think it's the first time I've seen you down in the lobby. Don't tell me you've been sent to clean up after the Valentine's Day ball. No, Beth called me. A guest knocked over a vase and made a mess in the lobby. Yeah, I saw that catastrophe happen. Just what we need, huh? Well, I'd rather be doing that than cleaning the reception hall with Nicole. Oof, yeah. I don't even want to see the state of the place after this weekend. I know chocolate fountains are for dipping, but I didn't expect to find someone's shoe in there. How? <laughs> no idea. You must see plenty of weird stuff too, right? Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you found in a guest room? Well, there was this lady who had a love letter addressed to someone I know. What? No way. Uh, who was it? You. You're messing with me. <laughs> it was worth seeing your face turn red. Wow, <laughs> you got me. Oh, I, uh, I better go help Beth. It's hell here with the snowstorm. It's okay. I need to, um... Yeah, yeah all right. Take care. You too. As if it wasn't enough, I had to deal with this endless letters of advice from Raymond. Raymond? What have you learned? Ah, he wants me to lower room prices. Now's probably not a good time to disturb Bernard. I can hardly believe you two are from the same family. In the States, we'd be sent to jail for those communist ideas. Bobby made it very clear he doesn't like anyone walking into his kitchen uninvited. I'm really sorry about that. I'll have a word with our kitchen staff to make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, that sounds a bit excessive, don't you think? Of course, of course. We're all grateful that your employer chose the Clarington for his stay, but... Okay, Sophie. Time to clean up that mess. I'll speak to my manager and see what we can do. Was there anything else I... Yes? I beg your pardon? You want me? Poor Nicole. No one should be stuck cleaning up the reception hall after a ball, even if they did draw the short straw. Yes. Right away. Was there anything else I... Don't you think? Of course, of course. We're all grateful that your employer chose the Clarington for his stay, but... There's something so peaceful about looking out at a storm. From the inside. Where it's warm. And dry. I should take care of the mess by the front doors. Uh, all right. Yes, right away. Was there anything else I... Something so peaceful about looking out at a storm from the inside, where it's warm and dry. Clarington for his day, but <clears throat> that smell. If only we we're allowed in there. I 
beg your pardon? You want me to... Uh. Oh, Shaq. Yeah. Leaving luggage in the lobby? Are you trying to get Bernard to kill it? Now's probably not a good time to disturb Bernard. Stairs, exercise. Elevator, convenience. Yeah, elevator wins this time. Was there anything else I... Well, that sounds a bit excessive, don't you think? Of course, of course. We're all grateful that your employer chose the Clarington for his stay, but... Yes? Bernard still leaves these around the front desk? Guess he didn't hear Beth when she swore she'd burn the place to the ground next time she had to suffer through one of his sermons. Uh, all right. Yes. Right away. Was there anything else I... Well, that sounds a bit excessive, don't you think? Of course, of course. We're all grateful that your employer chose the clarity. Poor Nicole. No one should be stuck cleaning up the reception hall after a ball, even if they did draw the short straw. Okay, Sophie. Time to clean up that mess. Uh, all right. Yes, right away. Was there anything else I... This leak really needs to be fixed. I hope the weather doesn't make it worse. Leaving luggage in the lobby? Are you trying to get Bernard to kill you? You can't leave that puddle in the lobby. That's just asking for trouble. Was there anything else I... Well, that sounds a bit excessive, don't you think? Of course, of course. We're all grateful that your employer chose the Clarington for his stay, but... Yes? I should take care of the mess by the front doors. Okay, Sophie. Time to clean up that mess. Chocolate mousse cake. Maybe Bobby wouldn't mind sneaking me a slice. <clears throat> that smell... If only we were allowed in there. Well, that sounds a bit excessive, don't you think? Of course, of course. We're all grateful that your employer- Oh, Shaq. Leaving luggage in the lobby? Are you trying to get Bernard to kill you? Now's probably not a good time to disturb Bernard. Bobby made it very clear he doesn't like anyone walking into his kitchen uninvited. Stairs, exercise. Elevator, convenience. Yeah, elevator winds can't leave that puddle in the lobby. That's just asking for trouble.
I beg your pardon? You want me- I should take care of the mess by the front doors. Uh, all right. Yes, right away. Was there anything else I- The guest must have dropped it when he knocked over the vase. Probably should return it to him. Ew. I better throw that away. Now I just put the leaves back in the vase, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Maybe Beth remembers who knocked over the vase? He'll want his film roll back. I understand, Mr. Ramsey. I wish I could make the snowstorm disappear. I really do, but... Sadly, that's not within my power. Beth, who knocked over that vase? Mr. Spade. Mr. Spade? Well, I can check with the airport and let you know when flights resume. Until then... Yes, yes, I know. You've said that already. But... No, that's very unlikely. Beth said the guest was a Mr. Spade. Well, the film roll probably belongs to him. I should be able to find his room in the logbook. That doesn't seem right. No, that's not it. Beth said Mr. Spade. That doesn't seem right. Room 505. Great, that's on my floor. I can return that film roll without going out of my way. Once I put these plants back in their vase, I can head up to the fifth floor. I'm not bringing these plants with me to the fifth floor. Come on, Sophie. You're not gonna carry those plants around the hotel, are you? Let's put them back where they belong. Come on, Sophie. You're not gonna carry those plants around the hotel, are you? Let's put them back where they belong. Almost forgot. I should go to the fifth floor to return Mr. Spade's film roll. It's just... I slipped on the puddle by the restrooms. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I probably should have cleaned that. Oh, no, no. It it's my fault. I should have asked Eugene to repair the leak. Which floor? Oh, uh, sixth. Thanks. What's the big rush? I need to bring this to our VIP guest. The one who rented the entire floor. Oh, is it that British man I keep hearing about? He's sort of a celebrity, isn't he? He sure acts like one. I wouldn't want to be that poor assistant he keeps shouting at. I wish I was assigned to clean his room. Can you imagine the weird things I'd find? Be careful what you wish for. I wouldn't be surprised if the man kept a few skeletons in his closet. Can't you tell me who he is? I've never actually met him. I always talk to his assistant. Only Bernard knows his identity. I do have a suspicion, though. Oh? But I'm, I'm not sure I should say it. Can't you at least give me a hint? Hmm. Okay, let me think. Ooh, saved by the bell. Hey, come on. Don't leave me hanging. Let's just say... I like to prolong the suspense. Wait. Is that the hint? Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> Fair enough. Have fun up there. You too. I should return Mr. Spade's film roll. Room 505 is on my list anyway. Mr. Spade? Mr. Spade? I should call Beth or Andrew. They'll, they'll know what to do. I hope. Bring that back to my cart.
Hampton Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. What can I do for you on this very fine day? Beth, I need your help. Sophie? What's going on? I, I think Mr. Spade's stalking me while I work. Really? I knew it! You did? I mean, I knew there was something fishy about him. He just has creep written all over his face, you know? How did you find out? He took pictures of me. I... I found them hanging over the bathtub. He set up a kind of... dark room. Pictures of you? Doing what? Um... I can't believe I'm about to say this, but... Sometimes... When I clean the rooms, I get a little curious and, um, you know, snoop through our guest stuff. Sneaky. And Mr. Spade caught you in the act, I suppose? Yes. I think... I think we should call the police. No! That's a terrible idea! But... Sophie, that man has pictures of you running your hands through people's stuff! But I didn't steal anything! I was just snooping, I swear. I know, I know, but say a client reports something missing, those pictures would put a big red target on your back. Well, I threw them out. Yeah, not your worst idea, but you found the pictures drying over the bath, right? Yeah. I'm no photographer, but I've been in one of those dark rooms before. You have? Yeah, I modeled for a while. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, those pictures were developed recently, but it doesn't mean there aren't more elsewhere. Well, I didn't look through the entire room, but there is a safe here. I bet you anything there'll be more pictures in there. Do you have the safe combination, then? I'm pretty sure it's locked. Hmm, give me a minute. Those idiots. What? I can't find the combination list. The night staff's probably lost it again. Anyway, we always ask that clients write down their code somewhere so they don't have to call reception a dozen times. Maybe you can have a look around the room and I call you if Mr. Creep comes back. You know, so you can get out of there in time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, and Beth? Mm-hmm. Please keep this between us. Of course. You're pawning off your possessions? What do you need the money for? Reception gave him a code. Maybe he wrote it down. Somewhere. How are you supposed to support yourself when no one will give you a job or a place to live? I'd forget my own head if I didn't write everything down. 
I guess we have that in common. No combination, no entry. Hmm. That's a lot of film. How many pictures have you taken, Mr. Spade? X marks the spot, but there's no way this is just a treasure hunt. X marks the spot, but there's no way this is just a treasure hunt. The oratory. I just went there for the first time and God, it's been years, hasn't it? this sale. I picked up that new winter jacket for mom. Harry's diner too. Were we ever there at the same time? Just how long have you been watching me? Morgan, is that your real name? Why did you check in under Mr. Spade? Request to move to 507. Why did- Yeah, no surprise Bernard denied the request. Mrs. Beaumont's been here so long, we could probably just put her name on the door at this point. The storm must be getting worse. I hope Mom's not too bored without her TV shows. Has to be a key somewhere. That 
letter from Bernard. Was there anything on the back? I think there was something on the back of Bernard's letter. I should check again. Lindsay, did something happen between the two of you before she died? Lindsay, did something happen between the two of you before she died? Looks like prescription drugs, but what are they for exactly? Did you intend for me to discover your little dark room? Or did this just fall down?
No combination, no entry. Hmm. Letter from Bernard. Was there anything on the back? That's... That's my schedule. Just how long have you been watching me? I think there was something on the back of Bernard's letter. I should check again. One man's trash is another maid's trash. Something tells me you won't be missing this. I hope you aren't eating those beans. for the safe combination? What do we have here? You spent 10 years. Date of discharge, 1957. Hmm, 57. I need to find some clues to decipher that code reminder. Is he here? He... what? No. Beth, you said you'd call if Mr. Spade was coming back to his room. Oh yeah, I did say that. Sorry for the fright. Oh my god, Beth. I nearly had a heart attack when I heard the phone ring. I didn't mean for it. I was just so caught up in the thrill of it all. I had to check in. Did you find more pictures of you? No, I haven't. But I did find something else. Yeah? He's got a kind of yarn map of Montreal on the wall. A yarn map? And where does it lead to? Lots of places. Most of them I've visited recently. Merde. What's the deal with this guy? 
I think you may be using an alias. I found some evidence that points to his real name being Paul Morgan. <laughs> well, he's certainly not the first man to check into a hotel under a fake name. Is it really common practice? It is, when the man in question is married, but the woman accompanying him isn't. Or at least, not to him. Hmm. Considering the state of his room, I doubt Mr. Morgan was expecting any visitors. Did you find anything else? He seems to be in love with this woman who doesn't love him back. You mean, you? No, no, someone else. I found lots of letters addressed to a woman named Lindsay, but she returned them all to sender, unopened. Are you sure it's love and not obsession? Maybe he stalked her like he's stalking you. I don't know. Whatever it is, I find it strange she didn't open the letters before sending them back. I would have had a look at them first. <laughs> of course you would have. So, is that all you found then? He has this book with, um, underdressed women on the cover. I don't think Playboy magazine qualifies as a book. No, no, it's not. It, it's a novel. It's called, um, And They Were Roommates. Oh, I see. And I suppose these women on the cover are really good friends, aren't they? What do you mean? Well, if it's what I think it is. It's probably one of those trashy books for men who secretly fantasize about two women getting real cozy with each other. What is it that makes them so trashy? And as she ran down the stairs, her heavy breast jounced under her veiled nightgown. That doesn't even mean anything. I know. But there's the word breasts every other sentence, so apparently that's enough to get some men aroused. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised Mr. Creep is into this stuff. Found anything else on him? I'll know more once I open the safe. Oh, so you found the combination? Yeah, sort of. I'm impressed. Well done, Arsène Lupin. What? Oh, uh, never mind. Don't let me keep you. Okay, I'll call you back. Yeah, you better. I won't call again unless Mr. Morgan returns. For real this time. All right. Thanks. That looks like a notebook. Maybe I'll find some answers in there. M and H. M and H. Who are they? That was taken in the lobby. That was taken in the lobby. You're going through their trash? You really want to find out what M and H are up to, don't you? Why are you following them? And who's sneaking out in them? This looks like Beaver Lake. Okay, Sophie, you should probably put this down. No. M and H. 
Maybe Beth could find them in a logbook. M and H could be in danger. I should ask Beth to help me locate them. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. It's me. Oh, hold on. Andrew. Andrew. Cover for me, will you? What's going on? Hey, Tintin. Just do it. Sorry about that. So, I take it you opened Morgan's safe? What was in it? A journal. His journal? Does he say why he's stalking you? No, but it seems he's stalking two other people as well. Oh, who are they? They're guests. I don't know their names, though. I, I was hoping you could find them in the logbook. Well, Snoopy. Although it may seem like it, I'm not actually clairvoyant, so I'll need something to narrow the search. Do you know anything about them? Mr. Morgan refers to them as H and M. Well, that could mean a lot of things. It could be their initials, or, I don't know, husband and mistress. Oh, I, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, I'll need a little more to go on. Hmm. From what I can gather, it seems they're together. Okay, so they must be staying in the same room. Do we have a lot of couples at the moment? Uh, well, yes. It was Valentine's Day last Friday, remember? Oh. Oh, indeed. Hmm, would you look at that. There's a couple staying in room 509, Hector and Marcella Cruz. Hector and Marcella? H and M? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Do you know anything about the cruises? Well, I saw them come in and out of the hotel a few times. Called a taxi for them once. The missus does the smiling and the other frowns a lot. Nothing to write home about. Do you have room 509 on your to-do list by any chance? I do, actually. Then maybe you go clean it and have a little look-see? Yeah, nothing unusual here. Just a maid cleaning a room. That's my girl. I'll call you if I find anything. Just be careful, okay? I will. I promise. Keys to enter room 509. I should probably check the break room. Come on, Sophie. That door won't magically unlock just because you want it to. I need my keys. Does carrying this everywhere really make us better maids? Bernard seems to think so. Another day, another dirty dish to pick up. Do not disturb. Well, that's one less room to clean today. I won't complain. Maybe I shouldn't wander around with my pockets full. Is there anything I can put down? A 
Okay, Sophie, back to the basement. Have all the supplies I need. Blocking the stairs seems dangerous. What if the elevator breaks down again? Come on, Sophie. That door won't magically unlock just because you want it to. I need my keys. Not right now, Sophie. Come on, Sophie. That door won't magically unlock just because you want it to. I need my keys. I'll need my keys to enter room 509. I should probably check the break room. Come on, Sophie. That door won't magically unlock just because you want it to. I need my keys. Maybe I shouldn't wander around with my pockets full. Is there anything I can put down? Maybe I shouldn't wander around with my pockets full. Is there anything I can put down? during break. I must have forgotten them in the break room. Shoot, it's locked. I guess I'll have to get Linda's master key instead. Linda usually leaves a master key in the women's locker room. Hypocrite bitch. <laughs> 
and- Oh, Linda. What would your husband think of all this? Oh, Linda. What would your husband think of all this? That'll do. I'll just have to make sure I don't forget to return it. He only unlocks the guests' rooms. I'll have to get my keys later. At least I can get into 509 now. Hey, you. Oh, hey, Beth. On break already? Sadly, no. I have an express delivery to make to the sixth floor. Isn't that Jacques or Andrew's job? Well, they're both busy, so... What about you? I thought you'd be in 509. I'm heading up now. I just had to grab Linda's master key before I could continue our... investigation. Oh, I see. Well, this has been quite the day so far, hasn't it? I can't remember the last time work was this interesting. Yeah, that's definitely one way to put it. That's not all, though. While I was looking for my keys, I found some graffiti on Linda's door. What kind of graffiti are we talking about? The words, hypocrite bitch, in red lipstick. <laughs> I wonder who could have written it. If I had to bet, I'd put my money on Wendy. Linda's been treating her like her personal punching bag as of late. I get Wendy's frustrations with Linda, but vandalizing her door? Isn't that a bit much? Sorry, but Linda's lucky to get away with just lipstick on her door. I would have done worse. I know she can be harsh, but it can't be easy dealing with Bernard. She must be under a lot of pressure. Maybe Wendy should have tried talking to her instead. For that to happen? Linda would first have to make herself seem like a rational, approachable person who can be talked to, and not a raging, unstable harpy. Hmm. You know, I don't know how you do it, Sophie. Maybe it's because my empathy only goes so far, but I admire that you're able to feel for just about anyone. I like to put myself in other people's shoes, especially if they're people I find fascinating, like you. Wow, the way you turned that compliment right back around at me was masterful. <laughs> well, this was a lovely chat, but I better see if Eugene is around maintenance. Hopefully he can help me find this thing for our esteemed guest. Yeah. We both got a lot on our plates today. I can't wait to find out more about our friends H&M. Take care. You too. I should be able to open 509 now. Back to the fifth floor. Getting into 509 will be no problem with the master key. Let's get to the bottom of all this. Oh, I do have 506 next on my list. Should I pop in before checking out 509?
Oh boy, someone's been living it up. Not exactly a cherished gift, if you just left it behind like this. I bet I'll find the answers about Mr. Morgan's stocking in room 509. First step should be to tidy up a bit. Searching a clean room is easier than searching a messy one. Looks like someone had quite the shopping spree. More work for poor Rebecca. Hang in there, Reb. These are lovely. I wish you'd had more confidence in yourself.
No combination, no entry. Hmm. I'll hold off on throwing this out just yet. The food's practically untouched. Someone's been sleeping here. I should leave it as it is. Wow, you look like a couple out of a magazine. This person looking for you back in Texas. Was he really just a co-worker? SW. Looks like you had a few appointments with him, Mr. Cruz. Or her. SW. Looks like you had a few appointments with him, Mr. Cruz. Or her. Who's got her personal information stolen? Is Mr. Morgan behind it? Who could blame you for seeking help? I'd do the same in your shoes. Locked. It looks like the code is made up of... Four letters. Someone tore that note apart, but I'm missing some pieces. I can't make out what's written. This looks right up Andrew's alley. I wonder if he's read this one. Maybe I'll find more of those torn paper pieces if I keep cleaning the room. Locked. 
It looks like the code is made up of four letters. Someone's been sleeping here. I should leave it as it is. Where could the rest of that note be? Should I check the other garbage cans, maybe? Maybe I'll find more of those torn paper pieces if I keep cleaning the room. It looks like the code is made up of four letters. Whoever wrote this is as much a reader as they are a doodler. Whoever wrote this is as much a reader as they are a doodler. Reading this right? The account's been emptied. These symbols, they look oddly familiar. You don't see someone withdraw $5,000 every day. Just what could have made you empty out your entire bank account? Symbols, they look oddly familiar. Thank you.
where could the rest of that note be? Should I check the other garbage cans, maybe? symbols match some of the ones on the torn message. Oh, these symbols match some of the ones on the torn message. Aha! I'll have to remember these. someone withdraw $5,000 every day. Just what could have made you empty out your entire bank account? Yes, these are part of the same set. I think I can use this. More of these symbols. Just what I was looking for. are part of the same set. I think I can use this. More of these symbols. Just what I was looking for. one of the symbols. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. Hey, Beth, it's me. Hey, so how did the snooping go? Find anything? I did. I found a message written in strange symbols. A kind of secret code. A secret code? Well, spill the beans. What did it say? I will leave notes in the vent next to your room. In the vent? Who the hell does that? I don't know. But whoever the message was intended for went through a lot of trouble to hide it. It was torn in a dozen pieces and scattered in three different trash cans. Mm. So the cruises are keeping secrets from each other. Do you think one of them's having an affair? Well, that's possible. It's quite obvious they're having marital problems. What makes you say that? I'm pretty sure the husband was sentenced to sleeping in the living room. I found a pillow and some sheets on the couch. Okay, so maybe he snores a lot. Or he kicks her in his sleep. I've been elbowed by my sister more times than I can count. Some people are just bad sleepers. Is that all you've got? Pretty much. I just have this... maid instinct. <laughs> really? How does that work? Does your apron vibrate when you enter a room? Does your duster light up when it's cleaning a chandelier that has seen too much? <laughs> I'm serious, Beth. I've cleaned the rooms of many happy, loving couples. This isn't one of them. It feels cold. Well, if you're right, I'll buy you a cape when this is all over. You'll be super made. <laughs> we'll know if my instinct is right once I have a look at the vent that's mentioned in the message. Yeah, good idea, Bean. I'm about to go on break, so if you need my help again, just ask Andrew to patch you through to the break room. All right, enjoy your break. Oh, I will. I will leave notes in the vent next to your room, but which vent? Now's probably not a good time to disturb Bernard. Do not disturb. Well, that's one less room to clean today. I won't complain.
Can't open these without a screwdriver. Might be able to find a screwdriver in the janitor's closet. Another day, another dirty dish to pick up. screwdriver. Hmm. What's life without a little challenge? Highest priority, huh? That means Eugene's probably working in Bernard's office right now. Oh, Eugene. I had no idea. Like Eugene asked Bernard to stop opposing the construction of the new psychiatric hospital. And Bernard was Bernard. 
Huh, this must be Eugene with his daughter. He looks like a caring father. Eugene's a pro at fixing the fuse box whenever there's a power. Hmm. I've never seen two people more suited for each other. I hope they work things out. They need to. <clears throat> it's, uh, Miss Bellivet, isn't it? What? Oh, um, Roy. Oh, right. You're the one who took last week off, aren't you? You had to, uh, take care of your sister, I think? Mother. My mother. She's, um, she's very sick. Hmm. No, I hope this doesn't become a recurring thing. I need to know I can count on you. I understand, sir. What are you doing here, anyway? Are you on break? Y yes, I am. Hmm. Don't take too long. No, 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 I won't. <clears throat> Well, don't you look oh. mischievous. <laughs> hey, Bean. If you're planning to give Bernard a good scare, sign me up. No, I'm looking for a screwdriver. For the vent. Linda asked Eugene to fix Bernard's window. Oh, I see. Eugene? What the hell? You'd better go and take a look. I'll stand guard by the elevator and make some noise if I see Bernard coming. Okay, thanks. I'll be quick. I have to find a screwdriver, but how often do I get to snoop around Bernard's office like this? This does not look like a nice brotherly check-in. Oh, Bernard. So close to doing something altruistic. What Bernard considers sinful debaucheries could fill an encyclopedia. Could be anything from wild parties to guests walking around with their ankles exposed. I kinda wish I worked here when Raymond was in charge. Sounds like the hotel was very different back then. Well, just look at these distinguished gentlemen. And a young Bernard.
closing something that could help so many people just because it's close to your hotel? This is so... I take it the open window was not an accident. Can't say I blame you, Eugene. get you to that vent. With this blizzard, Bernard's office will be a skating rink by the end of the day. Best to avoid that. break is over by now. No, it's not. I came by here not too long ago, and Andrew was already covering for you. That's because I was in the ladies' room. That's no excuse to... It's my time of the month. I... Uh, I... You're married, aren't you? So, you know how it is. I have to go more often, and... Oh, sometimes I stain the furniture, and, and don't get me started on all the... That's enough details. I... Miss Bellavit. What were you doing in my office? I wasn't... I was... I was simply closing the door. Someone left it ajar. Really? But that doesn't explain what you're doing on this floor. You know very well the cleaning staff isn't supposed to wander around the lobby for no reason. I... You wouldn't be lying to me, would you, Miss Bellavit? No. No, I swear, I... It's my fault. I asked her to come clean up a mess I made. Spilled coffee. Coffee? Oh, Miss Lambert, you're not supposed to have beverages at the front desk. Yeah, well, there are so many rules here, I lose track. <sighs> Come with me. Sorry. Time to see what secrets that vent is holding. Sorry, ma'am. How big did you say your party was again? Whew, that's big. It might be a bit difficult to... Whew, that's big. It might be a bit difficult to...
I guess I'm free to disturb room 508 now. But that's where Bernard and Linda were... Ew. I found another message written in secret code. What does it say? Meet me tonight in my room. Michael will be sleeping. We need to discuss our plan. Michael? Who's that? Another husband? I don't know. It's the first time I'm hearing of a Michael in this story. Hmm. Let me check the log. There's a Michael staying in room 507. Mrs. Beaumont's room? But she doesn't have a husband. She's here alone with... Oh, Michael must be her son. I got him some extra blankets the other day so he could build a fort. Hmm. Could Marcella... Yes? Uh, no, never mind. <laughs> so, what's next? I guess I should go have a look at 507, but it's not on my list. There's a do not disturb sign on the door. Well, I could call the room to make sure no one's there. Good idea. Hang on. You've got the all clear, Bean. Head on over. Thanks, Beth. I'll call you back.
Mr. Cruz, huh? Numbers, dates, times. What does it all mean? He's all but outright threatening you. Oh, I hope you can stay as far away from him as possible. Michael, adults can be so confusing. I promise it's not you. So you were eager to set up a meeting. M. Did Marcella send this? Locked. The key has to be around here somewhere. So a husband can abuse his wife and just get away with it? And people like Linda still think divorce is wrong? Ugh, funny how some games really stand the test of time. I used to play this with mom all the time. Funny how some games really stand the test of time. I used to play this with mom all the time. Sounds like this is from your school days, but the name of the sender is smudged. Aha! Keys are Snoop's best friend. need another key to unlock this. Haven't I seen one just like this somewhere?
Bridget Boswell. Didn't I say that name somewhere earlier? Those few coins in my tip jar were getting pretty lonely. They'll appreciate the company. That key looks so familiar. Why do I associate it with room 505? There you are, with Marcella. God knows where she is. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. Hey Beth. Bean, I've been meaning to speak with you. Oh, about what? Well, a little birdie told me Mr. Morgan and Mr. Cruz had an argument yesterday evening. Really? Who's your little birdie? Jacques. Apparently, it got so heated, he had to get involved. And listen to this. It sounds like we were on the right track, because he heard a particular word thrown around quite a lot. Wanna guess what it is? Affair? Bingo. Hmm. Did Jack hear anything else? From what he told me, it seemed like Mr. Cruz was accusing Mr. Morgan of having an affair with his wife. Wouldn't have expected Mrs. Cruz to fall for a man like Morgan, but I guess the heart wants what the heart wants. Maybe, but that doesn't explain Mrs. Beaumont's involvement with Mrs. Cruz. What do you mean? I found a chest in room 507. I think it can only be opened by turning two keys at once. I found one of them in Mrs. Beaumont's things. Oh, and the other one? Well, I remembered seeing a similar key in one of Mr. Morgan's stocking pictures, so I went back to check. Mrs. Cruz wears it as a pendant. It looks identical to Mrs. Beaumont's key. Wait, so Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz own identical keys that are both needed to open a mysterious chest? Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. I think they may have gone to college together, so maybe they're just good friends? <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. I guess we'd know for sure if we could have a look at that chest, but I don't think I'll be able to open it. I've looked around room 509. I would have seen the second key if it was there. Mrs. Cruz must have left with it this morning. Hmm, yeah. We were so close. I can't believe it all ends here. Well, hold on. I may have an idea. Get me a candle and some plaster, and maybe I can do something about that pesky chest. How? I'll tell you later. 
Just find me those things and I'll meet you in the basement as soon as I manage to leave my post. All right. Thank you for not giving up. Come on, you know I wouldn't let you down. Plaster and candles. Well, half the hotel's under renovation. I should be able to find plaster somewhere around here. Wait, Sophie, you don't need these. Be careful, it's a slippery slope towards becoming a hoarder. Eugene's a pro at fixing the fuse box whenever there's a power outage. This takes care of half of this little scavenger hunt. As for the candles, doesn't Rebecca keep some in her locker downstairs? locked. Fine. Keep your seat. People don't usually leave these unlocked. The way they look at each other. You can tell it's the real deal. limits. <laughs> Yvette's and Susan's favorite activity, talking behind other people's backs. It's locked. Off limits. Are you looking to buy land? I know you grew up on a farm. Maybe you're looking to get back. It's locked. Open sesame off limits. Recognized for doing a good job. That feeling never gets old. All right, we're getting somewhere. Now, to resist the temptation to spend it on a burger at Harry's. So you do have a stash of candles, but where is it? Mm, I'm good. Mm, I'm 
I'm good. All oh, right. My keys are still in the break room. Maybe Bobby took some candles from Rebecca already. Candles, but this looks like the laundry room. That must be the location of Rebecca's stash. Beth definitely doesn't want more reasons to have to talk to guests. Especially if it involves apologizing. It's locked. Fine. Keep your... It's locked. It's locked. Have I checked the break room? I think I left my keys there during my break. I'm not sure how the children are affected by what goes on at a bar on a Friday night. But I'm no lieutenant, so... Probably Beth's latest project. It's really cool how she has an eye for this kind of thing. Gotta hold on to these tight.
Ooh, is this a, a movie script? It would make sense for Rebecca to keep her candles by her workstation. Uncovered. Reb, you won't mind if I just take one, right? Got a candle. Now, what next? There you are. I'm not sure I understand what the plan is here. Well, when I was little, we had padlocks on many of the farm's sheds. My dad would always lose the keys, so one day he made a mold of them using wax and plaster. I was thinking of doing the same. Are you sure it's gonna work? Absolutely not. But hey, I guess we won't know until we try. Yeah, you're right. So let's do this. Okay. Hold on. That's not what's next. Have you done this before? You're a real pro. Now, let's give it a few seconds, so the mold really takes form. Okay, I think you can remove it. Follow the instructions, Sophie. Well, we're almost Hold there. On. Just pour That's the cup of plaster next. into the mold. All right, now we wait for it to dry. How long do you think it's gonna take? I don't know. I guess we'll keep poking it every now and then. I bet you didn't think you'd be making a plaster key today, huh? <laughs> Indeed, but I like it. It's rare that this job allows me to use my creative side. Your creative side? Well, granted, this key won't end up in any museum, but I enjoy the occasional artistic endeavor. Like collages? That one's yours, right? Yeah. I like to take fashion magazines and fix their lack of vision. Their lack of vision? I just think that fashion designers have been getting pretty lazy and bland lately. Don't get me wrong, my own creations are often a mess. But I like to think I'm good at editing. Putting things together to make them shine. I promise, underneath this terribly designed uniform, there is a girl with taste. <laughs> I believe you, but I've never actually seen you outside of work. Oh god, that's true. Well, we have to remedy that. Now that we're solving a mystery together, we may as well grab drinks too. What do you say? Yeah, we should. I don't know why we never thought of it before. Well, it's this place, you know? When your shift's over, you just want to forget everything about it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But some things are worth remembering. Hey, look! I think it's dry. I can't believe it worked. I could not have done this without you. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> well, I should get back upstairs before Bernard notices my absence. If he hasn't already. Let me know how it goes with the key. Oh, and uh, be careful while turning it, okay? You wouldn't want it to break inside the lock. Yeah, I'll be careful. Thank you for everything. No problem.
I've got two keys. Now, let's test them out. Careful, Sophie. You don't want this key to break. Oh, shoot. Unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Her alliterative name will surely take you back. These two sure love their riddles. Huh, Marcella invited you to the movies. Let me guess, you said yes. Doris Day. That's an alliteration, isn't it? Doris. I S. Unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Her alliterative name will surely take you back. These two sure love their riddles. Novelist Bridget Boswell is actually you, Marcella. Oh, Anne, murder might be a bit much, but you deserve some kind of justice. So, the symbols I've been deciphering you invented them back in the day to keep your love secret. That feels really special. 
I do like a happy ending. I just hope that's where your story is headed. Oh, so you came to Montreal under the pretense of celebrating your wedding anniversary. But all along, you meant to... After all this, turns out you're a fan of Bridget? Of Marcella? That's a lot sweeter than I expected. I'm glad you were able to open up to Marcella like an advance on my salary. So Marcella... Oh, Lindsay's a man. Yeah, I guess it was presumptuous of me to think otherwise. So, let me get this straight. Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz are some kind of star-crossed lovers? Seems like it, yeah. But I'm not sure whether they chose to meet here just to reconnect for a few days, or if there's something more to it. Well, I may be able to help with that. Really? How? Oh, some mail arrived earlier for Mrs. Beaumont. You've opened it, right? Me? Disregarding someone's privacy? Of course I did. <laughs> I'm a bad influence on you. Or have we been bad influences on each other? I guess we'll never know. So? What's in it? It's three train tickets. And, uh, oh, there's a tourism pamphlet for California. California? Well, it makes sense. It's much more progressive there than it is here. So, Anna and Marcella want to go there to live their love freely. Anna and Marcella, huh? You three are best pals now? Well, after reading so much of their correspondence, I kind of feel like I know them, you know? Yeah. But what about Mr. Morgan, though? I mean, Paul. How does he fit into all of this? Turns out he's a big fan of Marcella. Is she a celebrity or something? Remember that Pulp Fiction I found in Paul's room? Well, she wrote it under a pseudonym. I think her books gave Paul a chance to get out of his own head while he was staying in a psychiatric hospital. Huh, I see. He's still kind of a creep though. Couldn't he have stuck to fan mail? Stalking her like that. That's going too far. And why did he have those pictures of you anyway? I guess we'll never know for sure, but I don't think it was ever about me. It's always been about Anne and Marcella. Exactly. Well, it feels a tad anticlimactic, but who needs drama, right? At least it made our day pretty interesting. <laughs> it sure did. You know, after today, I think I get why you're so interested in the lives our guests lead. I try to forget they exist as soon as I'm done interacting with them, but... Once in a while, it's nice to remember that, well, even the most put-together person could be an absolute mess on the other side of the door. What about you? Who is Beth Lambert when no one's looking? I like to think that with me, what you see is what you get. But maybe an extra Snoopy super sleuth could uncover a few more layers. Maybe ones I didn't even know I had. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Come see me when your shift ends, all right? We could leave together if you want. Sure. If we're able to. With all that snow, I'm thinking maybe we'll have no choice but to spend the night here. Ooh, a sleepover. We could set up a pillow fort on the mezzanine. A pillow fort? We do work in a hotel, you know. There are actual beds here. I know, but isn't my way so much more fun? Well, we could take a page out of Michael's book and decorate it, and then spend the night throwing stuff at Bernard whenever he comes through the lobby. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> I just have to finish my tasks for the day, and then I can leave.
Mr. Cruz? Mr. Cruz. Oh, God. Oh, God. What happened? Mr. Cruz's life insurance bought Marcella. Okay. Let's not jump to conclusions. A, B, and Beaumont. I have to get the power back on. Is anyone in? Hello? I... I need help. Hello? Is anyone in? need this to restore power. Mm, it's too big. I guess I'll need something pointier. Mm, it's too big. I guess I'll need something pointier.
Okay. This looks like something I can use to open the fuse box. without the rest of the code unless those numbers I found in the laundry room could they be part of the same combination to change all of the blown fuses. Power's back. Now I should go down to the lobby. Call the police. Forgotten. Once I leave this floor, I probably won't be able to come back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Police service, station 22. There's a... There's a man dead. He's been murdered. I... I need the police. Please stay calm, ma'am. Where are you right now? The lobby. But the body, it's... It's upstairs. Can you give me the address, please? Oh, um... 11... 1178 Drummond Street. All right, ma'am. Officers are on their way. <sighs> Thank you. have to wait for the police. Bernard. 
Bernard really wants Paul out of the hotel. Okay, I can see how this could make Paul look bad. But it's obvious Bernard cares more about the hotel's reputation than the guests' well-being. Is this the brochure Beth was talking about? The West Coast. That's about as far from Montreal as you can get without crossing an ocean. So Anne and Marcella really are planning to run off together. Was what happened to Hector part of their plan? Hey, you! Great timing, right? I'm thinking if we're lucky, Bernard will let us go home. No point in working in the dark. Sophie? Bean, you're not scared of the dark, are you? Hey, is everything okay? I found Mr. Cruz. Hector. Oh, you did? What was the bloke up to? You don't understand. I found his body. He's... he's dead. Merde. Merde. Sit down, okay? You look like you're about to faint. Have you called the police? Yeah, they're... they're on their way. What happened? Was there an accident? No, I don't think so. Someone did this to him. You mean... Merde. Do you think it could have been Anne and Marcella? I... I found something on Hector that would point to that. Yes. Wait, so you touched the body? The dead body? I didn't... I mean... Yes. Kind of. Sophie, rule number one when stumbling upon a dead body, do not touch. It could really get you in trouble. So, what did you find? There was this letter that made it sound like Marcella would get a lot of money from her husband's death. Ugh, throw the affair into the mix and you get a pretty good motive. That's what I'm thinking. I'm probably going to hell for saying this. Who am I kidding? I'm going to hell anyway. But I can't really blame her if she did it. I'm not sure I'm following. You can't blame her for murder. I'm not excusing it. I'm not. Just... Ugh. Women like Anne and Marcella have so few options. It's like the world is designed to keep them apart. Beth. Oh, you know. You know. I've been with a woman before, Ziva Rivers. She's a photographer in New York. We were together for a while and I was so in love. It was, it was like a fire rain couldn't put out. I guess like anything that intense, it wasn't meant to last, but while it lasted, I was the happiest I've ever been. And if something had come between us, kept us apart, I would have done just about anything to be with her. Maybe, well, maybe that's what happened here with Anne and Marcella. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me with this. Maybe now you can understand why I care so much about you. I don't know if I'm feeling inspired by Anne and Marcella or if it's the shock of being so close to an actual murder, but, um... 
I'd really like for us to be more than just friends, Sophie. Yeah, I, I'd like that too. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> the police is here. Just be mindful of what you tell them, okay? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Miss Roy? Miss Roy? Miss Roy! Oh, sorry. I was distracted. I really need you to focus right now. I don't want to be here all night, and I'm sure you don't either. No. No, I don't. So, as I was saying, we're trying to ascertain the circumstances of Mr. Cruz's death. Can you tell me how you came to find the body? I... I was cleaning room 509 when I heard the elevator bell ring again and again and again. I thought maybe a child was playing with the doors, so I went out in the corridor, and that's when... That's when I saw him. All the blood and... Why was the elevator bell ringing? I'm sorry? You said you heard the elevator bell ring. Why was it ringing? I assume it wasn't a child after all. I'm not sure. I, I guess the doors must have malfunctioned. A malfunction? Is that something that happens often? Quite often, yeah. Eugene, that's our maintenance guy. He, he has to repair the elevator at least twice a month. We also have a lot of problems with the electricity and the plumbing. It's an old building, you know? Hmm. I'll have someone take a look at that elevator. If there was a problem with it, surely they haven't gone around to fixing it yet. No. No, probably not. So, what did you do when you found the body? I... I checked if he was still alive. How? I tried to find his pulse, but there wasn't one. Is that when you moved the body? Moved the... what do you mean? We have found evidence that the body first fell inside the elevator, but was then moved out of it. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, I, I must have moved him a bit to check his pulse. Hmm. Where on his body did you take his pulse? His wrist. His left wrist. Why not his neck? Well, I couldn't really access it because of the elevator door. I mean... The elevator doors? See, now I'm confused. If the body was still inside the elevator when you checked his pulse, then when did you move it? I... And no, you're right. I checked his wrist first then moved him out of the elevator to check his neck. I just wanted to make sure, you know? Mm-hmm. What did you do after that? Well, um, that's when the power cut. So I had to go to the janitor's closet. To access the fuse box? Exactly. Hmm. I, I changed a few fuses and turned the power back on. But there's a lock on that box, isn't there? Did you have the key? No, I didn't. Only Eugene does. But I thought an ice pick might do the trick, so I went to the ice machine to get one. Hmm. You're a size 7, I suppose. Um, yes I am. Why? What did you see when you went to the ice machine? There was... blood. A lot of it. Did you touch anything? I might have touched a few things, just to figure out what had happened to Mr. Cruz. Of course you did. Why so many witnesses can't help but compromise the evidence is just beyond me. <sighs> anyway, what did you do after restoring the power? I took the elevator down to the lobby. That's where I called the police. Do you remember what you said to the operator? The 
exact words. I... No, I'm afraid I don't. You said there's a man dead. He's been murdered. That's possible. What makes you so sure it was murder? I... I just assumed. What with all the... blood. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't believe that, Miss Roy. It's more than an assumption, isn't it? I'm not sure I understand what you... I know you like going through your guests' personal belongings. Safes left wide open. Makeshift keys left inside of locks. You haven't exactly been subtle about it, have you? Oh. Uh... Now, unless you want me to arrest you for violating your guests' privacy, I suggest you tell me everything you know. All right. Let's start with the victim's wife, Marcella Cruz. Apparently she left in quite a hurry this morning. What can you tell me about her? She's having an affair, but it's not what you think. She's been in love with another woman since college. They've been apart for more than, than ten years, and now they're... Yes, yes, I know all about Mrs. Cruz and Mrs. Beaumont's sexual deviance. Have you ever witnessed them engaging in immoral behavior? What do you mean? I'm asking if you've seen them being, you know, intimate. No, I haven't. No. And did you hear them discuss their deviant ways in front of Mrs. Beaumont's son, perhaps? Imagine. What kind of effect such perversion can have on a young child? No, I didn't hear anything. Did you hear them express their hatred of men? Did they ever talk about using violence against men? Did you hear them speak ill of Mr. Cruz? No, I didn't hear any of that. I'm sorry I can't be of more help. No, oh, I'm sure you are. But we're not quite done yet, Miss Roy. We've learned from one of your colleagues that the victim had a fight with a guest named Mr. Spade. What can you tell me about him? He spent some time in a psychiatric hospital after the war. That's when he got into Mrs. Cruz's novels, and they really helped yes, him- Yes, I already know about his time in a madhouse. We called the place and they painted quite the picture of him. Did you ever see him display odd behavior in or around the hotel? No. I mean, we've all got our little quirks, don't we? Did he seem obsessed with Mrs. Cruz? A little, maybe, but- Obsessed enough to kill her husband? No. Nothing like that. We all have our obsessions. Me, for instance. I'm obsessed with celebrities and gossip magazines and- You don't seem to understand, Miss Roy. Mr. Spade is not like you and me. He may look like us, but he's not. He's dangerous and needs to be taken off the streets. So tell me, did you ever see him be violent or aggressive? You're wrong. I beg your pardon? He is like us. We all struggle sometimes, some of us more than others, but there's nothing wrong with that. You may not have noticed, Miss Roy, but neither of us are in an insane asylum right now. He was brave enough to seek help. That doesn't make him a criminal. That doesn't mean he killed Mr. Cruz. You know, I'm starting to worry about your own mental state, Miss Roy, since you're so eager to defend- And I worry about your ability to do your job, Detective, since you seem to be such a- ENOUGH! One more word. Just one more word, and you'll be spending the rest of your night in a cell. Now get the hell out of here. I've had enough of you. Let's go see what Bernard wants. The atmosphere is so different in here. It'll probably be a while before the hotel reopens. Without Eugene, the lobby will be a swimming pool by the end of the month. Will the rest of the building even be standing?
I'll need a mop to clean the puddle. With all the leaks, I'm sure there's one nearby. I'm not going back up there. Go to hell. Beth. Hey. Are you okay? I'm out of a job. But other than that, yeah, everything's just peachy. What? No, I... I hope you're luckier than I am. Come join me when he's done with you, all right? I'll be... questioning my life choices on the mezzanine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ah, Miss Roy. Come in. I suppose you know why you're here? I would guess it has something to do with the murder. Well, you'd be right about that. We've been getting a lot of press lately, and not the good kind. I wouldn't expect you to understand the position I'm in, but I assure you, it's quite uncomfortable. To have one's life's work blown away like that. All thanks to some sexual deviance and a nut job. <laughs> it's obvious to me now that I haven't been firm enough. For guests of such morals to be comfortable booking a few nights here and, and, and committing such a horrid act. <sighs> no, things need to change. This means elevating our standards to the highest possible level. And it starts with the people working here. It starts with you. With me? Yes. From what I've heard, you've been quite the exemplary maid lately. Clean rooms, satisfied guests. I take my job very seriously, sir. As you should. We'll see for the future, but for now, you'll be allowed to continue working here. Thank you. I'm not done. The police have finished their investigation and left a mess on the fifth floor. I want you to clean it up. You want me to go back there? Yes. Why not? I found a dead body on that floor. I'm... I'm not going back. I'll make this simple for you. If you don't do it, you're fired. I... Okay. I'll take care of it. Good. Well, what are you waiting for? Get to work. Oh, now? Yes, now. That'll be all. Hey. What a week. <laughs> yeah. So, what did Bernard want with you? He wants me to clean the mess on the fifth floor. What? Unbelievable. Oh, he's such a jerk. Yeah. I wish I would have stood up to him, but I really need this job. I know you do. Did Bernard say why he was firing you? Ugh. He was going on and on about keeping deviance out of the hotel, so <laughs> I may have lost my cool a little. A little? I told him I was one of those deviants he was so afraid of. He froze for a moment, then showed me the door. So 
what's next for you. I think I'm done working under Bernard's or Linda's. Maybe it's time I become my own Bernard. Minus the fascism, of course. <laughs> I could see myself owning my own establishment. One that caters to the right kind of crowd. Believe it or not, I do enjoy the company of people. Just not, you know, the stuck-up, entitled clientele of this prestigious hotel. But maybe if I were behind the counter of, say, a bar instead of a reception desk. <laughs> I don't know. Is that silly? No, it's not. In fact, you'd be perfect for it. You're the most charming person I know. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad you're in my life. Me too. Can I, um, kiss me? Yes. I thought you'd never ask. I've been thinking about Anne and Marcella a lot. Should I be jealous? <laughs> no, not in that way. I've been thinking about what they went through. How they had to lie and pretend. Day after day. How they had to live someone else's life for ten years before they could finally be with each other. I... I don't think I could do that. Well, I have good news for you, Bean. Times are changing. It's already started elsewhere. And it will get here, eventually. One day, all the Anne's and Marcella's of the world will live happily together, and no one will give a damn. I really hope that's true. It will be. Thank you.